Hello everyone, and welcome back to BioScholar. Today, we're diving into the world of tissues. You might be wondering, what are tissues, and why are they so important? Well, stick around because we're about to break it down for you. So, let's start with the basics. Tissues are like the building blocks of our bodies. They're groups of specialized cells that team up to perform specific tasks. These tasks are vital for the proper functioning of our body, and tissues play a crucial role in making that happen. There are four main types of tissues in the human body. Epithelial tissues, connective tissues, muscle tissues, and nervous tissues. Let's discuss them one by one. Epithelial tissue is one of the four basic types of tissue in the body, and it plays a vital role in many different functions. The term, epithelium, comes from the Greek words, epi, and, thiel. This is the thin tissue forming the outer layer of a body's surface and lining the alimentary canal and other hollow structures. Epithelial tissue is found all over the body, including skin, lining of the digestive tract, respiratory tract, and urinary tract, glands, such as the sweat glands and salivary glands, lining of the blood vessels and other organs. There are two main types of epithelial tissue, simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. The simple epithelium is made up of a single layer of cells. It is found in areas where there is a need for rapid diffusion, such as the lining of the small intestine. The stratified epithelium is made up of multiple layers of cells. It is found in areas where there is a need for protection, such as the skin. There are also several subtypes of epithelial tissue, each with its own unique characteristics and functions. Some of the most common subtypes include squamous epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, columnar epithelium, pseudostratified epithelium, and transitional epithelium. The squamous epithelium is made up of flat, scale-like cells. It is found in areas where there is a need for protection or absorption, such as the lining of the lungs and the blood vessels. Cuboidal epithelium is made up of cube-shaped cells. It is found in areas where there is a need for secretion or absorption, such as the lining of the kidneys and the small intestine. Columnar epithelium is made up of tall, column-like cells. It is found in areas where there is a need for secretion, such as the lining of the stomach and the intestines. Pseudostratified epithelium looks like it is stratified, but it is actually not. The cells are all connected at the base, but they vary in height. It is found in areas where there is a need for both protection and secretion, such as the lining of the respiratory tract. The functions of epithelial tissue vary depending on its location. Some of the most common functions include protection, secretion, absorption, excretion, filtration, sensory reception, etc. Epithelial tissue helps protect the body from harmful substances and pathogens. For example, the skin protects the body from the environment, and the lining of the digestive tract protects the body from harmful bacteria. Epithelial tissue secretes a variety of substances, including mucus, sweat, and hormones. For example, the sweat glands secrete sweat, which helps to cool the body. It also absorbs nutrients and other substances from the environment. For example, the small intestine absorbs nutrients from food. Epithelial tissue excretes waste products from the body. For example, the kidneys excrete urine, which contains waste products from the blood. Some epithelial tissues are specialized for sensory reception. For example, the taste buds are made up of epithelial tissue and are responsible for the sense of taste. 
Epithelial tissue is a vital part of the body. It performs a variety of important functions, including protection, secretion, absorption, excretion, filtration, and sensory reception. Epithelial tissue is found all over the body, and its type and location vary depending on its function. So, let's explore connective tissues together. First, let's break down the different types of connective tissues. We have connective tissue proper, which includes both loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Loose connective tissue contains collagen and elastin fibers, providing support and elasticity. Adipose tissue, a type of loose connective tissue, is primarily composed of fat cells and serves as an energy reservoir and insulation. Dense connective tissue, on the other hand, is densely packed with collagen fibers and can be further categorized into regular and irregular dense connective tissue. Tendons, which connect muscles to bones, allowing movement and transmitting muscle-generated force. And ligaments, which connect bones to other bones, on the other hand, stabilize joints and prevent excessive movement by connecting bones to other bones, fall under this category. Next, we have specialized connective tissues, which include cartilage, bone and blood. Cartilage is a firm, flexible tissue found in various parts of the body, providing support and reducing friction in joints. Bone tissue is hard and rigid, offering structural support and protecting vital organs. Blood, our fluid connective tissue, plays a crucial role in transporting oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and waste products throughout our bodies. Now, let's take a closer look at what makes up connective tissues. Connective tissues contain various cell types, including fibroblasts, which produce the extracellular matrix, adipocytes, responsible for fat storage, and chondrocytes and osteocytes, found in cartilage and bone, respectively. The extracellular matrix, or ECM, is a complex network of proteins and carbohydrates surrounding cells, consisting of protein fibers like collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers, as well as a gel-like ground substance composed of proteoglycans and glycoproteins. Connective tissues serve several vital functions in our bodies. They provide structural support to organs, bones, and muscles, ensuring our bodies maintain their shape and integrity. Connective tissues also offer protection, such as bones safeguarding vital organs like the brain and spinal cord. They facilitate connection by forming tendons and ligaments, allowing for movement and joint stability. Additionally, connective tissues have a role in storage, with adipose tissue storing energy and bones storing minerals like calcium and phosphorus. Blood, as a specialized connective tissue, is responsible for transporting vital substances throughout the body. Lastly, connective tissues house immune cells, contributing to our body's immunity against infections and diseases. Our bodies are incredible machines, and muscle tissues play a pivotal role in making them work. First, what exactly are muscle tissues? Well, they're one of the four primary types of tissues in our bodies, along with epithelial, connective, and nervous tissues. Muscle tissues are unique because they allow us to move, maintain posture, and perform various functions. There are three main types of muscle tissue, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Let's start with skeletal muscle tissue. It's attached to our bones by tendons throughout our body. Under a microscope, it appears striated, giving it a striped or banded look. Importantly, 
skeletal muscles are under voluntary control. That means we can consciously decide when and how to move them. Skeletal muscles are responsible for all those physical activities we love, like walking, running, and lifting. Now, let's move on to smooth muscle tissue. It lines the walls of various internal organs, like the digestive tract and blood vessels. Unlike skeletal muscle, smooth muscle lacks striations and looks smooth under the microscope. Smooth muscles are involuntary, which means we can't consciously control them. Instead, they're regulated by the autonomic nervous system. Smooth muscles are the unsung heroes of our bodies, facilitating processes like digestion and regulating blood flow. And finally, cardiac muscle tissue. This specialized muscle is exclusively found in the heart. It's striated, similar to skeletal muscle, but with a distinctive branching pattern and intercalated discs. Cardiac muscle is also involuntary, but it has its electrical conduction system that regulates the heartbeat. The autonomic nervous system can influence it. The cardiac muscle's primary job is to keep our hearts beating, ensuring blood is pumped throughout our bodies to supply oxygen. Before we wrap up, let's touch on some key characteristics shared by all muscle tissues. Muscles respond to electrical or chemical signals. They can contract and generate force. Muscles return to their original shape after contracting. They can stretch without damage. Muscle cells are often referred to as muscle fibers. Skeletal muscles work in motor units, controlled by motor neurons. Muscles require a lot of ATP to function. These incredible tissues keep us moving, ensure our organs function, and keep our hearts beating in the case of cardiac muscle. Nervous tissue. It's a fundamental part of our bodies and plays a crucial role in how we function. So, let's dive right in and explore what nervous tissue is all about. Nervous tissue is one of the four primary types of tissues in the human body, alongside epithelial, connective, and muscle tissues. It's primarily composed of two main components, neurons, often referred to as nerve cells, and neuroglia, also known as glial cells. Neurons are the units of nervous tissue. They have three main parts, the cell body, dendrites, and anaxin. The cell body contains the nucleus and other organelles, while dendrites receive incoming signals, and the axon transmits those signals away from the cell body. Often, axons are insulated by a myelin sheath, which speeds up signal transmission. Neuroglia or glial cells are the unsung heroes of the nervous system. They provide support and protection to neurons. Types of glial cells include astrocytes, which maintain the blood-brain barrier and regulate the chemical environment around neurons, and oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells, which produce the myelin sheath. Microglia are the immune cells of the central nervous system, while ependymal cells help produce cerebrospinal fluid. So, what's the function of nervous tissue? Well, it's all about transmitting electrical impulses or nerve signals. These signals are vital for sensory perception, motor control, coordination, and communication within our bodies. Nervous tissue also plays a significant role in higher cognitive functions like memory, learning, and decision-making. To better understand how nervous tissue works, we need to talk about its organization. The nervous system is divided into two main parts. The central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, encompassing all other nerves and ganglia. 
Nervous tissue is organized into intricate circuits and networks of neurons. These networks work together to process and transmit information, allowing us to react to our environment, make decisions, and even form memories. And that, my friends, is the world of nervous tissue. It's a remarkable part of our bodies that enables us to experience the world around us and navigate through life. These four types of tissues come together to form our organs, which, in turn, team up in organ systems to keep our bodies running smoothly. Pretty amazing, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and also press the bell icon for more videos about science and biology.